Yes, Bumblebee's still there. <laughs> yes. degrees this morning. I think we have arrived in Siberia. <laughs> it's really cold. Yeah, we had to sleep in our down jackets last night, but it's a beautiful day, blue skies, so I think it's gonna warm up. from the hotel she just came outside and she's like was it cold last night and we said no no it's all fine and then she gave us chocolate <laughs> a couple of coffees as well and she invited us in for breakfast after we've packed up so that'd be a nice start to the day Here we have chleb and sirka, also known as bread and cheese. <laughs> mm. Delicious. Especially how she served the bread and cheese was perfect. Thick bread, loads of butter and a thick piece of cheese. <laughs> the lady here at the hotel, she just gave us some magnets from Scobardino, which is really cool. Look. Scobardino. No. <laughs> is that how you say it? <laughs> Probably not. But I mean, how cute is that? Amazing. Cool. Whoa. Okay. Pa. Pa. Yeah. Pa. Pa. It's working. Yeah. Audio is working. It's always a challenge, eh? Thank you, really friendly lady from the hotel to take care of us. Have a good day. Those guys had to sleep in the truck the whole night because there was no rooms in the hotel for them either. And they had the engine on the whole night as well because obviously they needed heating. Oh man, and they just told me yesterday that they arrived like new and fresh in town to take on a job for five days. But then they couldn't find any room. Yeah. All the hotels here are booked out. I think this town here at the moment is like a hotspot for workers. Everyone is coming here. Yeah, and there's only, I think, four or five hotels in town. Anyway, I'm really glad that we managed to at least find a safe place to pitch the tent and we didn't just have to do it like on the side of the road somewhere. Yeah, it ended up okay, hey? Yes, beautiful actually. Yeah, it was all right. I missed my tent. Oh, I almost forget. Good morning world. Welcome back to our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. We're here in the small town of of Skovorodino in far eastern Russia. Yes, and it's a beautiful sunny day. Yep, it's nothing like we imagined in Siberia. The forecast is that it should reach about 26 degrees. And it's our fifth day on the road here in Siberia. And we've still got a lot of miles to cover. So let me show you guys the route for today. So we're making pretty good progress on our Russian leg. We have now four more rides to reach the border of Mongolia here. And currently we are here in Skovorodino. Today we are gonna be heading down, 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 across to Mogocha. Yes, we are making progress, but we still have a long way to go. Not a massive ride today, but that's simply because there is nowhere to stay between Mogosha and the next big city, which is Chita. So we'll be heading to Mogosha today, Chita tomorrow, and if all goes well, we'll be reaching Ulanude the next day. Yeah, and this will be like a milestone for us because Ulan Ude is also our anti-pole point. Yes, of course, because way back, I don't even remember how far, we reached Puerto Natales at the very bottom of Chile. Puerto Natales. So that means we've officially reached Antipode 1 on our trip around the world. Congratulations! And it's crazy because Ulan Ude 
is on the exact opposite side of the world. <laughs> yes. And these were the first two antipodal points we made when we actually just drew the route on the map. We were like, oh yeah, we'll just go through Chile and then we'll just go through Ulanode next to Lake Baikal. And we're actually closing in on that part of the record. Our second antipodal point is coming up in a few days. How cool is that? So we have about 300 50 kilometers to ride to Morosha today. Our navigation says it will take us five hours. It's already eight o'clock, so better hit the road, let's go. Breakfast, by the way, cost us seven pounds twenty, and it included four coffees, four fried eggs, like four slices of really thick, nice bread, and cheese. Yeah, <gasps> that's not a bad price, hey? Because we still have to be careful here in Russia, because our uh, credit cards they are not working, and of course we exchanged some money or enough money but you never know at the end how expensive things cost you know we spent already some nights in a hotel where we had to pay like 30 pounds and then with all the petrol and food and stuff everything adds up quite quickly so yeah we have to be careful we don't want to end up here in russia without money yeah that's for sure i'm not 100 percent i remember this part of the road <laughs> do, you, do you remember no i remember that we went down a dirt road yeah but I don't know if it was really this long. Whoa. Awesome, we're passing again right by the Trans-Siberian Rail here. Look at this, amazing. And this is the rail line that we saw beginning in Vladivostok and finishing in Moscow. Oh, so this rail line runs like nearly the whole length of Russia. It's absolutely crazy. The past three rides were quite intense and I really can feel my back. And yesterday I tried to be a little bit sporty and I did some yoga, but I can't stretch at all. Normally I was always that I got my hand palms on the ground. You know, I can't even get it to my knees anymore. Like I'm so not flexible and sporty anymore. No. <laughs> I have given up completely. Yeah, my neck is uh, a little bit sore as well from just all the wind and everything. Like just sitting on the bike for so many hours it's been day after day after day i mean we have been on the road now since over 400 days and yeah it's your body says uh, not thank you the opposite <laughs> <laughs> unthank you unthank you yeah i'm sorry body i will take care of you once the trip is over <laughs> i will start doing some workouts again and yeah try to keep fit we'll see won't we we'll see <laughs> whoa look at this guy cool cool <laughs> it's like a sort of homemade tractor i don't even know what it is i am astounded at how much forest there is here in Russia. I mean, I have never seen so many trees in my entire life. We've pretty much had, apart from the odd patches of farmland, it's just been unbroken forest all the way since we left Vladivostok. A really nice feeling to just be surrounded by such a large, large area of forest. Yeah, this forest, the taiga, as they call it here, is uh, part of an unbroken chain of forest that basically stretches around the entire world. This makes up the largest forest in the world and we're just rolling through it, hey? Yeah. <laughs>
peaceful forest of Siberia. Ah, that's nice, isn't it? Beautiful here. Yeah. So little people, so many trees. So what have we got for lunch? <laughs> yes. What's this one? Uh, bread. Yeah, never saw this before. Okay, what's this one? <laughs> Cheese. And eggs. Yes. Good, I was hoping for something different today. Well, you can have some pine nuts as well. Hey, there you go. Or pine cone. <laughs> except, yeah, except we can have pine nuts, but uh, you have to literally get them individually. Yeah. <laughs> fun about it. No, but honestly, I think you would burn more calories picking the pine nut out of this and eating it. I think you would actually burn calories. I think if you were left with just pine cones to live off, mm -hmm. you would starve to death. Well, you can use it as a um, diet. If you want to lose some weight, just, you know, get a couple of those. Yeah, Sergey told us this was from a cedar pine. Pretty cool. Very cool. So we're about halfway through. We've got 163 kilometers to go, where hopefully we've got a better hotel situation than we had last night. Because that was ridiculous that we had to end up camping in front of the hotel because there was no rooms. 32,999.9. We just hit 33,000 miles on the road. Really incredible how uneven that road is actually yeah yeah Sergei told us that because this area is frozen for a large portion of the year and then it thaws and then it freezes and then it thaws that just wreaks havoc with the road system the ground you know softening falling away and you, it just means that you just get loads and loads of of undulation you get loads of potholes I mean it must be such a big challenge to maintain this road here. Considering that in the winter they can't do anything because everything's frozen. So wow. the only time they have to actually work on this is during the summer. Oh no, he's not alright. Yeah. I tried to pull him out, I think. Yeah, one truck fell into the fell into the ditch there, hey? Yeah. Alright, here we go. Leaving the main highway, turning off to Mogocha. That was a pretty smooth ride so far, hey? Yeah, I was really surprised that uh, there wasn't really much, like no cafes, no petrol stations, like it was really remote actually. No towns, just a lot of trees. So we have eight kilometers down here and then we're going to try and find a hotel. There's one hotel called Hotel Tourist. So I think that's probably a good place for us to go, hey? Mogocha! There it is. It's quite a big village, but I don't know if there's a petrol station. I hope there is, because we've like barely got any fuel left. Hotel, Hotel Turista, supposed to be very, very close. You have arrived. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Here. Okay. You can see the word tourist in uh, Russian. Yeah. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. says Wi Fi cafe. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah. All right, I'll just stop here for a second. Okay. And we'll see if they've got any rooms for us. 12 seconds later. Okay, so this might be a similar situation to yesterday because this hotel, Hotel Tourist, is uh, full, even though there's absolutely no tourists. So I don't know what they're, who they're full with, but they're full. It's kind of crazy, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm really, really surprised 
Yeah, I think it's just like uh, we were told, local workers just taking up all the rooms, basically. Just people coming here to work. I don't understand. Yeah. All right, anyway, she gave us a recommendation for another hotel down this road. So we're going to try this one and see what they can do for us. Fingers crossed. Ah, uh, this one there with the orange circle. Okay. Try number two. 15 minutes later. No. Cool. Everything occupied. That's crazy, hey? Yes. Okay, so I think, is there one more hotel in town? She said go to this one here. Okay, Yalta. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Yalta then. I just want to know, know if we can actually stay in the town or if we have to carry on. Yeah, I thought actually it's the opposite, you know, that all hotels are empty. <laughs> okay, let's check it out. The doors are open. It's maybe a good sign. Good luck. Five minutes later. Yes. So, yes. The lady here in the hotel, she rung up like two or three other places and one place has an apartment for us. So I don't know exactly what it is. She just gave me the address and she just um, gave me the price. It's 2000, which is 20 pounds. I'm happy to pay that today. <laughs> That doesn't sound too bad, hey? Yes, let's go! So she told me as well, it will take about two hours for the apartment to get ready. So we have a little bit of free time. Maybe we go to the shop and buy some supplies. Okay, let's buy something tasty. Yeah. Yes, we found accommodation yes. in Mogusha. Cool. Oh, nice. Let me see. Cool. I just gave these kids our sticker. He's put it on his bicycle. And then Lavi and Ollie here on this bicycle. Nice. Спасибо. Yes? Ah. А сколько мотоцикл стоит и сколько в нём кубов? Ещё 50. Yeah. good, good. Сколько месяц? 250 kilograms. 250. Wow. Wow. Good. How are you? You speak English? I am Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. Ah, we go Azerbaijan. Your name? Uh, oh, Oliver. Oliver. Oliver Lavinia. He from Azerbaijan. Oh. Yes. We will go. We will go to Azerbaijan. Yes. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Super cute kids. Oh, that's nice. He was like really really into just translating loads of stuff He was just like asking me loads of things and just kept translating and translating. Yeah, so cute All right, we're coming up to the apartment. I think it is in this block or the next block Oh, yeah, the next block Apparently it's here. Okay. So we just got the keys from the host and she just uh, showed us where the apartment was and we have a, quite a few flights of stairs to do. Okay. 
Here we are, home sweet home. Hey, look at this place. You would not expect this from outside, hey? Look at this. It's got like wood floors, it's beautiful. And they have a washing machine. Yeah, bathroom here. It's not too bad. Through here, there's even another room. Wow. So look, you've got our own little area here. Cool. And then through here, there's another room. I don't know what this is for, but <laughs> it's cool. Wow. Look at the giant sofa. It's like a six person sofa. The walls and ceilings. It's actually pretty cool, no? Beautiful. What's inside here? I have no idea. Maybe just a cupboard. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. Home sweet home, hey? Let's get comfortable, hey? Good evening, guys. We made it. Happy and alive. I know we look uh, quite funny because I forgot that we have to do the evening vlog and I chucked all our clothes already in the washing machine. It was so necessary. But I'm pleasantly surprised about this apartment. Look at it. It's actually quite nicely decorated because um, before we came in, I was a little bit scared, actually, to be honest. <laughs> I am uh, the next block. But once you get inside, then it's actually quite okay. And we can look at Bumblebee, we can keep an eye on her. She's down there. And I have the disc lock on, so if we hear any alarm going off, we can just peek our head out and uh, keep an eye on her. So we have now only two more rides to reach the city of Ulanude, which is our last stop before crossing the border to Mongolia. So we're doing incredibly well here in Siberia. We have covered a lot of miles. And I'm so happy that we found this place at the end because again, we arrived in town, we asked like three or four hotels and everyone told us no rooms available. So that the girl actually helped us to call the lady, which is the owner here. Um, so super, thank you. Oh my God, I'm so, so happy about that. But tomorrow we will reach a little bit of a bigger city. So hopefully we will have a better room situation there. And that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below. We will see you next time. There's nothing better than a home-cooked meal. This is potato dumplings, aubergine, peppers and tomatoes with a cream cheese sauce. Spectacular.